Hey everyone, this is Miss Valentine and you are watching the Experimental Design and Graphing Notes. We are actually doing these as more of a review. Um, many of you may have seen them before in your biology notes back when, long ago when you took biology, uh, but they are very fundamental concepts to the study of any science, so I think it's important that we review them this year. Uh, you are studying chapter two this week, and chapter two has a lot of different fundamental concepts that form a basis for a lot of the su subjects that we'll be studying, um, but a lot of questions in the AP exam focus on being able to interpret graphs, design a graph, design an experiment, how do you make an experiment more reliable? So that's one of the reasons I wanted to really hit on this in our notes this week. An experiment has to have a title, and the important thing about a title is making sure that your reader knows what they're going to be looking at. So what, what is your experiment about? You want to be as specific as possible, and you don't want to be creative or be humorous when it comes to the title. So I know that in English class, sometimes they, they want you to hook your audience maybe with a title, um, but that's not the point of a title in experimental design. You want to be specific to the point about what you are going to be writing about. Now, the format of the title will um, can take this form of the effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable. And of course, you would write out what those variables actually are for your experiment. Um, and if you forget what those things mean, we are going to review those in a few slides here. So this is definitely one of those things that people forget if they don't use it all the time. So we will review those two variables. But again, the format, um, this is a very effective format to explain exactly what your experiment is about. Um, it can be a little bit different if depending on the experiment that you're doing, um, but just know that that's, that's a very uh, clear cut way to title your experiment. Here um, is that graph you saw on the opening slide, cuteness versus number of legs. That might better be explained with the title of the effect of number of legs on cuteness of an animal. And as we see, four-legged animals are definitely the cutest. A hypothesis is not an educated guess. Um, I mean, I guess it is in a way, but let's let's get a little bit more technical than that. Really, a hypothesis is taking a stance on, an, on whatever it is that you're going to be testing, saying what you predict the results are going to be. And your hypothesis, of course, does not need to be right. In fact, you shouldn't be even considering um, or taking a side uh, emotionally at all. Um, you just state your hypothesis, and even if you really, really want it to be right, you need to test it in a way that does not involve emotion. Um, and so that's one of the biggest challenges of science is making sure that scientists who are human are not bringing in their bias. Um, so the prediction can take the format of if I do this, then this will happen because of this reason. And this is a very good go-to format, um, but it is not the essential um, only way to do a prediction. So sometimes predictions are not really well fit for the if-then format. And so if there is an experiment or a study that we're going to do during the year where you need to come up with a hypothesis, I'll let you know if the if-then because format doesn't work. But for the most part, when you're doing controlled experiments, uh, formatting it with the if-then because is a very good way to go. When you are designing a controlled experiment, you need to have something called an independent variable. Oftentimes you might hear scientists call it a controlled variable because that's part of a controlled experiment, or it's also called the manipulated variable. So it's something that you change or manipulate um, over all of the setups that you have in the experiment. Um, it's a variable that you control, you change, you, you make it what you want. Um, and it's going to be the thing that causes a chain change to happen. Um, and th that's what you measure, the dependent variable we'll talk about on the next slide. So this is something um, where everything is set up the same. You just um, have the independent variable changing from setup to setup. The dependent variable is not really like an object, which is kind of misleading when you think of a variable, you think of like something solid, but the dependent variable is just what you are measuring. Um, it's also called the responding variable because it responds to the uh, changing of the independent variable. Um, you don't control this. This just happens depending on what is different in the independent variable 
setups. Um, so it's something that you're just measuring. You're just seeing it for what it is. Um, and it's the result of the action that you took. It's the response to the action that you took. And we're going to do some examples uh, to go through this in just a minute. Now, constants are all the other variables in the experiment that remain the same for all of the trials. And so you want to have as many things as possible. Ideally, you want to keep everything else the same um, if possible. That can be kind of tricky when you're doing, say, like medical studies where you just have to pick a random sample and then you don't always know if everybody's doing the same thing um, with their lifestyle. Um, the only difference is one group gets the pill, one one group doesn't get the pill, but you don't really know if those uh, things are controlled. So it's not always possible to keep things constant, but you want to do as much as possible. A control is just the group in the experiment that does not have the independent variable. It's the one that doesn't get the treatment. Um, they also call it the control group. So if we were doing a study of a specific drug um, or medicine, you give the drug to one group, that's the independent variable is the drug, and then the control group would get no drug. So you just set up everything the same to make a control group. You set up everything the same except take away the independent variable or the thing that you were testing. So, for example, a plant study could look at the effects of different types of light um, or different types of seeds. It looks like in this experiment, in this picture here, you have one type of seed in one setup or one um, trial, and then you have a different type of seed in another trial, and maybe you're looking to see um, if one of them grows better in red light or in sunlight or whatever, whatever um, situation it is. But you notice the soil is the same, the cup size is the same, the amount of water you give it is the same. So you want to keep everything the same except for what you change, which in this case it looks like is the type of seed or the type of plant. Okay, let's try putting our new knowledge to work and see if we can pull out the important scientific variables and other information from this example problem. A group of students is assigned a populations project in their biology class. They decide to determine the effect of colored light on radish plants. They grow 12 radish plants in four clay pots, four inch clay pots with 25 milliliters of water daily in 100 grams of potting soil in red light, green light, blue light, and full spectrum light. Each day for five days, they measure the height of all the plants in each pot. So I want you to take a moment and pause this video, go through and try to identify the title, the independent variable, dependent variable, constants, control group for this particular problem. And I will give you some background knowledge about full spectrum light. Full spectrum light just contains all the different colors of light, um, all different wavelengths. So that would include the red, green, and blue light in the full spectrum light. And go ahead and pause the video, take a moment to try and draw those things out, and then play the video when you are ready to go over your answers. The title of the experiment, a good title for the experiment, would be the effect of colored light on plant growth. So the colored light um, is your independent variable. We'll talk about that in a moment. And then plant growth is the dependent variable, what you're measuring. So once you figure those two things out, you can come up with a pretty effective title from that. Now, if you put more specifically the effect of red, green, or blue light on plant growth, that would be just as fine as well. In this case, this hypothesis, uh, there is no because portion of it. Um, it's if a plant is grown in colored light, so not being specific. Again, if you are specific, that's fine. If the plant is grown in colored light, then its growth will be less than in full spectrum light. So this one is just a comparison of other colors to the spectrum light. You could make a guess about other um, other light colors or other combinations of the light that you're talking about. Now, um, in many cases, if you have a lot of background knowledge about different types of light and plant growth, you could add in the because part of the hypothesis. And if this were a larger scientific study, you would definitely want to include that as part of it. The independent variable, like I said before, is the color of the light. And it says with units here in parentheses, um, 
If there is something that doesn't have units, like color, then you don't need to have units. Uh, we're not measuring wavelength of light. We're looking at just the color, and that doesn't have units. So you don't need to have that for this particular example. The dependent variable, the thing that you are measuring, is the height in the plant. So you're comparing how tall they grow when exposed to different colors of light. So the plant height does have units, and you're measuring that in inches. So you just put that in parentheses next to it. The things that are constant, um, the size of the pots, the daily amount of water, and the mass of the soil, all of those things are kept the same, so those are considered constants, things that are kept the same. And then finally, if you um, put your plants in full spectrum light, that would be considered a control because it contains everything else that the other experiments have, um, except you take away the independent variable, that red light, green, or red light only, blue light only, or green light only. Those were the three colors, right? Um, so the, the full spectrum light would be your control group because um, it will allow you to see if there was any other type of change that could have happened as a result of just random, random things, um, things with the soil or things with the, the other uh, factors, the other constants. All right, so um, part of your homework this week is going to be to practice some more of these problems. So feel free to refer back to these notes if you need to when you do those. Um, it really is kind of like math almost, where you're just picking things up out of the um, out of the problem and identifying them, and it just takes a little bit of practice. Um, and actually, we are going to make this part one video. Um, this is the end of the part one video for today, just so I can keep it below 15 minutes and post it on YouTube. So um, we will pick up with graphing in part two of these notes.